not getting interview call from product based and fan company so this episode is for you we have recruitment expert from google and in this episode we will be covering tips tricks suggestions for every level of experience starting from freshers to professional starting from tier 3 college candidate from service based company resume job change and much more keep watching this video till the end and don't forget to comment down with your current job title your current company and your dream company so that recruitment expert can help you to get your dream company keep watching till the end so today we have a very special guest sneha she work at google she have previously worked with flipkart she has huge uh, experience in uh, recruitment i'm glad sneha you said yes to come down to beyond <laughs> interview series and i am damn sure this is going to benefit a lot of people in terms of understanding and get over the myth most of the time people have in terms of the recruitment uh, can you just quickly uh, like help with your journey in the recruitment and past companies basically yeah thank you so much irak for having me um so just to give you like an overview i'm coming with about 6 years of experience i i've had a very lucky career trajectory where i got a chance to work with some solid product and service based companies um and also cross paths with you know some great minds where which is only contributed to my growth so far so i'm looking forward to continuing the same journey as well great and once again thanks and uh, okay today we are going to talk on a very special topic i think this is a like love for most of the folks like how to get a interview call from a fang or a product based company most of the folks who start their career or even experience the biggest challenge is at least get a call most of the people are confident i will crack it but how to get a interview call is something which is challenging maybe i have faced this personally in past you might have faced and lot of folks might have faced a similar problem so okay with this maybe let's start with the very fundamental and ground basis like how did fresher get a interview call in the past and what has changed over the period and in in the current era basically placements are no longer like a seasonal affair as such because they've definitely broadened the horizon from the past few years that we have noticed right where um, there has been introduction to competitive internship programs as well um where even the individual is kind of getting an opportunity to be on the floor see the madness experience the madness and kind of know what is in store for them as well and i also feel this is a fantastic opportunities for companies to come forward and provide the exposure to an individual that they need because they're going beyond like a 30 minute presentation or a brochure uh-huh. so that probably is the biggest difference that i have noticed and significantly we have definitely transitioned from some of the past traditional um, structure that we've been following so i think you and i may remember this where um, an academic percentage was sometimes a cut off or like a qualifier for you to even sit for placements so all of this is now overlooked where even the hiring has kind of become very um, skill based and i think introduction to a lot of online assessments also has helped us um focus on a larger crowd right uh, and to evaluate them and see their practical knowledge mm-hmm. um, more than just uh, the theory based so this is probably what i have noticed yeah actually you rightly said like most of the time as people are worried about i need to chase for percentage percentage now it's no longer like you have a bad right. something at least you should have a passing cut off right and then right. let after that your knowledge what matters yeah i i think that is really really good now the other thing i think question from the audience is how difficult is to get a interview call uh, from a fan for a tier 3 or even service based companies right um so honestly i feel we've progressed a lot in terms of just letting a college kind of define you or your eligibility um to put you up for an opportunity right but at the end of the day yes things do definitely kind of boil down to the fact that it is a role specific requirement that we are looking at mm-hmm. so let's say i'm looking for xyz and i see it on your profile i will definitely want to kind of give you the opportunity rather than having filters in terms of uh, let's say a tier 1 a tier 2 tier 3 or um a service based company um that is something i personally keep it aside and i'm aware of a lot of people doing the same as well mm-hmm. uh, because at the end of the day it's merit that's going to take you ahead 
Okay, so are we saying now no, no longer it matters from which college you are or you are from a service based or a product based company? Those are the secondary parameter. The first parameter is your knowledge and your the project that you have worked basically. That's what we are uh, boiling to. Is that correct? Definitely right. Because when it comes to being on floor and just working on a specific project, at the end of the day, it all boils down to your skills and how good you are at problem solving or how quickly you can work around certain things. And I think that tends to come either with practice or with experience. So I don't think there should be other filters in terms of you know determining um, whether or not you get at least an opportunity to be a part of the interview process. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because that is most of the time most of the people have myth. I don't have a solid background. I don't have a solid college as in my resume. So will I get shortlisted or not? As this okay. is going to helpful for most of the folks. Now, again, I'm going to touch upon a very hidden and a very secret kind of thing that it is very, very core to the HRs. Like what are the different tools HR basically use in order to shortlist candidates profile? Got it. Um, so we've come a long way from being very manual centric, right? Like almost every organization right now more or less has an ATS that they function with. Now, do they rely on just the ATS in terms of kind of figuring out uh, like building a pool or looking at candidates? Definitely not. Um, they go out and use different um, platforms that's currently available. It's actually slightly difficult for me to kind of narrow down to a single one mm -hmm. because A, the market has something in store for you on a daily basis. And B, we can't really look at just one, right? I know organizations that probably look at two, three different uh, platforms in terms of finding talent. So it's slightly more difficult. I, I can imagine a follow-up question from your viewers, right? In terms of then where do we stay active in the first okay. place? So any professional network, let's say LinkedIn can probably um, help you showcase what you're currently doing and what you've done in the past. Um, this platform is also kind of giving you an opportunity to also look at jobs available. So as and when you're applying, sometimes, yes, you are deviated to probably a platform that an organization is using, or it'll take you to their career site, which is slightly more easier in terms of uh, just applying for a role. Got it. So basically we are drilling down, like definitely the, the platform like LinkedIn is definitely going to be very boom for most of folks. And there are other platform, like you can go and definitely apply on the other platform. It can be any because multiple companies use multiple tools. It's not just one tool a company relies on. Correct. The other thing that you talked about the ATS, maybe you can touch, do you want to touch upon some ATS? What is ATS like? How a company leverages that and what benefits the company? Okay. So ATS basically stands for an applicant tracking system. Um, this kind of gives you an overview of um, suitable eligible candidates right now how do they reach the specific uh, uh ats is either by applying through one of your channels um that can either be whatever you've opened to and you've kind of linked the whole um the, the ats as well as the uh, platform that you're using it kind of brings down your profile there now we can fall back onto this in terms of data to kind of have an overview in terms of you know when you had applied or what the background of a specific candidate is in terms of just interview history per se mm -hmm. um you can also keep it updated in case you're looking at uh, ATS as a channel for you to kind of go back and lean on to um, some poll that you're targeting at. Um, the re another reason I was not able to kind of narrow down to a specific platform is because it also depends on the success ratio. Uh -huh. So like probably people are experiencing like a good ratio for a specific platform. So they tend to stick to it. It sometimes a platform will kind of benefit for a role in specific as well. Mm -hmm. You also have platforms that um, are open to women alone, right? So mm -hmm. you can find like a complete pool over there. So these are the few things that comes into the picture, but like I mentioned, it's slightly difficult to narrow down, but have like an active um, profile on social network. I mean, on sorry, on uh, professional networking sites. Um, which gives you, which lets the other person have an access in terms of what you've done, what you're doing. Um, and also it's like an easy way to kind of start the communication also. Okay. That, uh, that means like making your profile ATS friendly, is something going to help for big companies, uh, especially because that does not just help to get shortlisted, but also sometimes to track your history. If you have any history with the company in the past, right. in terms of the recruitment or those are the really great point. I, I, I think. So uh, again, uh, another question from the audience, like 
what does a recruiter look into the resume when they are shortlisting and what differentiate a fresher resume from an experienced person <laughs> It. So I'll kind of narrow down to a couple of points, which I think will answer like both halves of your question, right? Yeah. So um, when you look at someone who comes with a little bit of industry experience, it's very, um, so what we look at in terms of, let's say, how we can measure the impact a profile has created in the organization. If it is from a contribution per se, like how have you added on or influenced to your company's goals as such, um, let's say, um, if you're looking from a contribution perspective, it can also be in a project where, you know, whether you were involved right from creating or just helping um, evolving the product as well. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the insights that we get while looking at a resume per se. Mm -hmm. um, but I also feel like resume is quite worded in terms of you're just writing a lot of uh, things down, right? Mm -hmm. So if your resume can also kind of... Um, help a recruiter or like an engineering team also who's looking mm -hmm. at your resume to have access to your other active platforms let's say github stack overflow mm -hmm. which not only so your resume is talking about what you've done but mm -hmm. if your profile is also able to showcase what you have done it's very mm -hmm. easy for us to draw a parallel and also kind of resonate in terms of what you have written and what you have done so that is something I would highly recommend for freshers or someone with experience to, you know, kind of fall back onto your work and have a look at it as well, um, along with your resume. So in short, you are saying your resume is not your biography. Like don't put all the shit in there. Correct. Resume. Only the important thing that showcase highlights who you are actually in terms of the professional work that you are doing. Right. And as you right. said, a couple of things which I personally uh, like prefer and like is like, what kind of contribution that you are making, you should always put down in the resume, which helps in order right. to uh, identify either you are a team player, you are leading someone or you are just getting your task board cleared, right? That okay. can really differentiate from that. that. Those are the really cool thing. So like, as you said, now, what should a candidate do differently in order to get shortlisted for PAG? <laughs> Um, I think you should constantly work on building your network. Mm -hmm. Now, this can be if you're looking at just um, interacting with the existing employees or just keeping in touch with the talent acquisition team. Um, if it is, um, if, if someone's coming from a fresher background, I would definitely recommend themselves to get like an industry mentor per se, mm -hmm. who can kind of paint the picture in terms of what is in store for you mm -hmm. or the fact that you can, come prepared on so and so aspects so they probably are not going to be of help immediately but mm -hmm. they are also someone you can fall back onto as a safety net because they are there to kind of give you an overview on how things work now fang your dream company whatever it is uh, whichever company you're targeting follow them closely if that's what you're looking at um, as a place that you want to be um, be up to date with what they're working on, right? Or they're coming up with something new. Just be um, on par with them um, in terms of things. A uh, lot of organizations are also now being very generous in terms of extending, let's say, some of their town hall invites mm -hmm. or they're having conferences or workshops or conclaves, mm -hmm. which you can definitely be a part of mm -hmm. um, in terms of just hearing from what the team does or what the organization is looking forward to doing. If it is in person, nothing like it. Mm -hmm. Be on the floor and build the connection. It is easier for you to, it's easier for people to remember you, honestly, yeah. if you're there. So it will also give you a, like a wider, um, like a pool, right? To interact mm -hmm. with, whether you're looking at a leadership or whether you're looking at talent acquisition or some dream team that you have within the organization to be a part of. Um, so that is something I would definitely recommend. And if you're following an organization closely, understand their requirements and sharpen your skills. So definitely go back and work on some of the aspects that you see is like, you're, you're seeing it everywhere in the organization. Got it. So work on it, build on it, which will only improve your chances further. I personally like one of thing and I'm going to follow that proactively. As you said, <laughs> having a personal one-to-one -one connect and going yeah. into such uh, conclave or uh, workshop or such thing, which is 
especially having happening in some of the organization that gives a next edge because as you said you have personal connects you build personal okay. bonding and when you seek for some help on the so like professional network on linkedin sometime in future you have definitely a different edge because you have met a person you have built that okay. connection and bonding and definitely if you know about the team company and when you are discussing with your engineering manager maybe and you are talking about i do i know what, what this team does and how it works it gives a next edge like engineering manager or the recruitment team need the person who is already aware of something like you don't have to start from zero so and right. that's that's a cool really cool now another another shot like is it possible to get an interview call for a person which is holding a bit less let experience than what is listed in the uh, like uh, job profile or the job description basically um so when we are looking at developing a job requirement right there is a certain rationale that we come with mm -hmm. in terms of why we are looking at certain people um for this specific role because certain attributes and skills sometimes develop with experience or with the fact that you've been in the industry but like you just mentioned if it's like a small window that we are looking at mm -hmm. um you can definitely shoot your shot um but if it's a fairly um larger window that we are looking at probably what you can do to kind of increase your chances of hearing back from the uh, recruiter or from the uh, company per se is to apply for multiple roles mm -hmm. so look at roles that kind of pertain to what you're doing which is more aligned to what you have done and which kind of fits the bill right a slightly a little better than what you were looking at um so that's one of the chances i feel um that will increase your chance in terms of getting through if you're looking at uh, at least applying for more than two opportunities that's available got it have you personally shortlisted anyone knowing this person is not fitting in the criteria in terms of experience but that person is damn good like from profile it seems like this is a person i need right it did it happen ever um sometimes you understand what the role requires right mm. and if you're able to see it um on paper it there's like no harm in just giving a call and trying to find out um how well this fits in and uh, of course the platform is definitely open um in case they are able to cut the bar in that case got it so basically if, even if you are as, like you are a smart person and you are residing on the edge like either just like uh, ongoing or you can say the edge for the senior role or an edge where you are right. just on the other side maybe you you can crack that very easily you don't have to worry about the experience and sort of thing just focus on your skill set uh, that's a cool one <laughs> when shall a candidate should start looking for a fang or a dream product based company um the crowd that we kind of encounter right now right it's very different from something that i have noticed before mm -hmm. um i don't really see let's say just a brand or the perks that a brand comes with as your driving factor in order to just look at an organization mm -hmm. so they kind of deep dive into what is coming their way if they are part of the organization right so they look at opportunities growth general development what is in store for them the kind of people that they're getting an opportunity to interact with on a daily basis it all boils down to what you're looking for from an organization mm -hmm. and at any given point if you feel something matches to what you're looking for mm -hmm. i think you should definitely go ahead for it there's no golden um, number that i can give in terms of dates or months that you need to kind of wait to be a part of any of these organization if it if it is something that you feel is would do justice to your career trajectory i think you should go for it and personally i i can chip on and uh, for from my experience right. like most of the time people who target for this product based company or the fan company they start looking when mm -hmm. they are in the notice period and that most of the time right. doesn't work because these companies take some time in order to process go through your interview right. process and finally roll out the offer background verification personally it has taken a couple of month for me in order to complete this process and if you are waiting okay. Okay, i'm going to apply for such companies when i hold some offer and i'm in a notice period on a safer side dude i'm not sure if it is going to work and <laughs> if it work for anyone like what do you say on that um 
I I personally did notice a few of them who line up uh, specific organizations towards the end of it mm-hmm. because uh, they feel they would be better prepared. But like you um, rightly mentioned, right? There is a timeline uh, that we kind of have to stick to, mm-hmm. and we may not be able to quickly work around things. So mm-hmm. basically. Um, a better planning in terms of how you want to take things forward would be beneficial not just for them but also the person on the other side yeah you don't have to rush like you don't have to ask hr please yes. schedule my interview because i have a joining date coming in 15 days i want another offer so that that's good so i think the final and the most important any tips that you wanted to share with the folks in order to increase their chances of getting selected uh, in product based or tech company it's going to be an age old classic tip that i have that is just be interview ready what i mean by this is look at upskilling um, work on you know probably getting some certification that you feel will add value to your profile or your skill set and um, constantly work on you know kind of familiarizing yourself with the problem uh, statements that will come your way mm-hmm. because um, there's a treasure trove of information out there in the market especially in terms of how an organization works right mm-hmm. or how their interview process is or um, how their rounds are or what you need to cover in terms of topics it's just all out there mm-hmm. so when you know you're aiming at something probably start a little sooner to kind mm-hmm. of build because you never know when there's a requirement and when an opportunity will come knocking at your door mm-hmm. make sure that the window uh, <laughs> from which you have received the call till you taking the interview is slightly shorter mm-hmm. so try being prepared from that perspective and um, if you're someone who's on the other side of the coin who already got an opportunity to kind of interview with a specific company and did not cut the bar for um, reasons um definitely try going back to the recruiter and hearing back from them in terms of some constructive feedback mm-hmm. basically something that you can work on go back to the whiteboard work on it it will only improve your chances the next time you're applying for the same and come back ready with the uh, interview come back ready. <laughs> interview ready next time that makes sense right. like you always you should know why you got rejected so that you can work on that and you can come prepared work on the uh, the weakness or where you have lack some sort of and you can crack the interview next time i think yeah right. this this has definitely worked even for me it had worked in past like you can't be like hit the milestone in single shot sometime right you have to just keep on trying and you eventually make it happen right so i think those are the damn cool advice that you have given today and most of the viewers are going to benefit from that so uh, isne thanks a lot for coming down and sharing your your uh, vision from from hr or recruitment perspective and yeah hey we are thank you so much here i also i really appreciate that you kind of moved from your forte right from a tech you have kind of taken a whole different path and um, you're helping your viewers um, like your other videos i just hope this can also be of help to at least a couple of them definitely thanks a lot isneha i hope you like the tips and suggestion from the recruitment expert if st- you still have any questions please put down in the comment i will get it covered in the upcoming episode so keep watching beyond interviews and see you in the next episode